If you're looking to understand how tables get linked together, this is the perfect video for you. This topic is so popular that we remake this video every year to give you a fresh perspective on exactly how to link tables in Airtable and similar no-code tools. So if learning more about how to link tables is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you to escape the drudgery of spreadsheets and to really embrace the power of Airtable and similar no-code tools. In this video, as I said, we're gonna be taking a look at how to link tables in Airtable. But before we get to that, I first want to invite you to join me for some templates. If you're newer to these tools, you are going to love the five templates we've put together to solve five of the most common business use cases we see. And each template is accompanied by its own private video. You can get full access to all of those templates for free by signing up at gapconsulting.io slash templates. I'll include a link wherever you found this video. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen here and we are gonna take a look at linking tables. We're gonna talk about all the different types of linking, including more advanced things like junction tables. Now, I've built us a very simple example using a quick AI standup here. We have two tables, contacts. We see that we have five different uh, example contacts here. We're tracking email addresses, phone numbers, and the position of these individuals, as well as having profile photos. And then of course, we also have companies. Now something I don't really love, and I did stand this up with AI, what I don't love about this is that they're not using the proper field types where it would make sense. So if we have email addresses, this should be an email field, not a text field. Same thing here with the phone number. You see this phone number has a single line text field type. A lot of times when you're using AI, it's not going to give you the ideal setup, and that's okay. That's the point of this channel. We are here to learn how to build things properly so that we don't have to rely on AI to do this work for us. So. Couple of quick changes there, and of course, all of this is sample data. Any uh, resemblance to real data, please take worth a grain of salt. It is just for example purposes. So let's talk about the first kind of link that we build. We have contacts, we have companies. Let's imagine a scenario where every contact that we had is only assigned to one company. Now this isn't realistic, but let's assume that it was, right? A contact is linked to one company, but the other side is also true. A company is only linked to one contact. So how do we set up that relationship? Well, we have to have both of these tables here in our database, and they have to both be in the same database for Airtable. So I've got them both here already, and now we can build the link. And so I'll simply name it. Obviously, I'm on the contacts table here, and I'm going to build the link to companies. Now, I'm going to build that link, and when it's created, the reciprocal will also be created. Anytime we build a link from A to B, B is also linked to A. So I'm going to name this company link, and I'm going to just do a quick search for companies. Now I see right here, because I already have my companies table, it's popping up and saying, oh, you probably want to link to companies. But maybe I don't know that right off the bat, and I choose link to another record. Here it's going to show me all the different tables in my database that I can link to. Notice that I can self-link, so I can link contacts to contacts. This is very rarely done, but it's available to you if you need to link things to themselves. The types of issues that we might run into with that are when we're working with tasks. So if you're building dependent tasks, you might say task one links to task two because it's dependent upon one another. But in this case, we're going contacts to companies so we can build that link here. Now, here is where we need to take a quick look at our link. Can this contact link to multiple companies? And we said for our initial example, it's just one to one. A company is one contact, a contact to one company. So we toggle this off, this first option here, which allows us to link to multiple records. We do not want that here. And we will create the field. Now, the reciprocal, as I mentioned, is also going to be created. So when we go to companies, we see now that we have this link to contacts. And we have to go in here as well. So always consider both sides of your link in Airtable. And we have to toggle this off as well. So a company can only link to one contact. Now this is called a one-to-one -one relationship. One thing links to one thing on the other side. 
Let's go ahead and confirm the change and you'll see what I mean. I'm going to select this company, Galactic Gadgets, and I'll link to our top contact, Luna Starbeam. Now when I go over here, back to contacts, I'm going to see that Luna is also linked over to Galactic Gadgets, and this is perfect. This is that reciprocal relationship I was talking about. Now because we selected a one-to-one -one relationship, you might expect that Luna would be unavailable for other companies to link to, but that's not exactly how this works. Similarly, Galactic Gadgets can also still be selected in the list. So you'll see here on the company link that I can still pick Galactic Gadgets, and this kind of goes against what we had said in the way we built this. We said, hey, uh, a company can only link to one contact. Well, here we see that it's now linked to two. But on the other side of this, if we were to link, let's say, to Finn, so this is Eco Warriors linking to Finn Whiskers now, well, we will not be able to select another contact from this part right here. So from this screen, we can't actually select another one. But on the other side of it, if we said, ah, uh, here's Zara Thunderbolt, we could still then select Eco Warriors. And that is where we get into that like gray area. So we've told the software, hey, we don't want to link to multiple things. And yet there's really no way to disable that functionality at the source. So you see here that this uh, particular contact has in fact linked to multiple companies, even though we toggled that off. So this is something to be aware of. Now, if you want to shut that capability down, there's a way to do it. Let me really quickly remove my selection there. And when we're in the linked relationship, we can actually apply some filters. So we can say, for example, we're gonna filter down to a certain condition. When you look at companies, to select for a contact, we're going to say that the company contact field, that is the contacts for the companies, are empty, right? So if we say that they are empty, then that means that we will not be able to see any companies that have already linked to another contact. Let's kind of take that one step at a time. We're gonna drill down now, look at the companies. We basically set up a filter that says, if this field is empty, then show us that company as an option to link to. If it's not, then I don't wanna see it, right? So back over here now, when I open up my different options, anywhere that we have a company that's already linked to a person, we're not seeing it again. So that's giving us that extra layer of redundancy so that we don't fall into that trap. But again, we need to include this on both sides of the equation. So over here on contacts, we need to do the same thing. We can say we're, we want to filter down the contacts as well. We want to make sure that the contacts company link field is also empty. Because if that's already linked to something, then we don't want to see those contacts available for linking. They've already connected something. So this can get a little bit complicated, but just go ahead and test it out and make sure that after you save those settings, you get the output that you expect. We expect not to see Luna and Finn because we know that Luna and Finn are already connected to companies and that's exactly what we find, right? They don't show up here. So this is your first type of linked relationship. It's a one-to-one, -one, one contact to one company. But let's be real, this is a very rarely used link type. More often than not, we have one thing linking to many things. So we might expect one contact to link to a company, but a company could connect to multiple contacts. So for this, this is called a one-to-many relationship. And we simply say, well, on the company side of things, it can link to multiple contacts. So here we can save this up and we'll confirm that change. And now we're going to be able to link multiple contacts to the same company. So Zara and then we can select again, here's Willow. And so now we've seen that this is a one-to-many relationship. One contact is only linking to one company, but a company is linking to potentially many different contacts. So over here, all we have to do is make that selection, allowing it to link to multiple records. Make that change in one place, and that will allow us to make sure that we have multiple links showing up here. Now, as you might imagine, we have one more type of connection that we can build, and that is a many-to-many. -many. So we can go back over to the contacts now and say, hey, a contact can link to many different companies, and we do that by toggling this on right here and saving it up. Now, this is a many-to-many. -many. That would basically say a contact 
can connect multiple companies and a company can connect to multiple contacts. The most common type of situation that we see though is the one to many. One contact linking to one company, but one company linking to many contacts. So this is the most common link type that you will experience, but now we're gonna take it one layer deeper. We're gonna think a little bit more complexly, if that's a word, and we're gonna take this just a layer deeper by creating a third table that is a junction table. So let's imagine that we wanted to track the types of relationships of all of the contacts to these companies. Like for example, maybe we have multiple contacts at a company, but only one of them is the uh, person in charge for getting a deal over the line. Maybe only one of those people is the person who is gonna get bills sent to them. So the first thing we need to do is delete the links that we already have. I'm gonna delete the link to companies and we're getting rid of that. Now remember that we have to do this now in two places because we got rid of the link on one side. Well, this is the other part of that equation that we now have to break as well. So you're gonna find that if you don't delete your links that you get stuck with these fields, I call them ghost fields, because I have to delete that link in two places, otherwise this field just kind of floats out in the ether forever. All right, now that I've gotten rid of it, let's build a next table, a third table, and we'll call this relationships. And here we're going to just delete all of the existing fields. Now we're gonna to get to the junction table part. This can get a little complicated, but if we take it a step at a time, you're gonna see how powerful this functionality is. What I'm doing is I'm going to link to both of my tables individually. So I'm gonna say, let's build a link to our contacts. Here's a link, but I'm only going to allow one contact selection in each relationship. This is key for junction tables. And now I'm going to build the junction component where I'm linking to another table as well. So here I am again in my relationships table. Now I'm gonna to connect to companies. And again, I'm toggling this off. One client or one contact per one company per record. Now, check out how this works. I'm gonna select my contact. Let's say it's Luna and I'm gonna collect the company here. So let's say Luna is associated with Galactic Gadgets, but I wanna know like her role in that company. Well, now I can set up this single select and I can add an option called billing contact and I can make Luna the billing contact at Galactic Gadgets. But let's say I know other people at Galactic Gadgets. Well, I can simply now have that same relationship, multiple links to Galactic Gadgets, and I can link to all the different contacts I know there. Maybe Finn works there, maybe Zara works there. Uh, maybe in Finn's case, he is the deal maker. Maybe in Zara's case, uh, Zara is admin there. So now I'm able to track their roles at that company. Now, when I build a junction table, I always like to use a formula in my primary field, and it's a quick and easy one. All I wanna do is concatenate or string together the information for these two different links. So I'm linking to contacts and companies and I wanna bring both of those in here. So I'm gonna say contacts and really quickly bring in my companies, close that out. And the reason for this is when I look at this record, it's gonna tell me, ah, this is Luna as it pertains to her relationship at Galactic Gadgets. This is Finn as it pertains to his relationship at Galactic Gadgets. Now, let's do a quick thing here. We're gonna group by this company and you're gonna see why this is so valuable. So if I need to know who is the billing contact at Galactic Gadgets, I have that information now. But let's say that Luna also works for another of the companies in our database. Well, now we can accommodate that and we can track her relationship with that other company as well. Here's how we do it. We add a new record here and we will make a selection of Luna again. But let's say Luna works over at Eco Warriors. And in this case, Luna is not the billing contact. Now she's running in an admin type of role. So I've got two different links for Luna to two different companies and two different roles. And this junction table, this third table called relationships is allowing me to get more precise with how I track the relationship between all of this data. So let's look at this from the other side just to fully round out the idea here. If we look at Luna here, 
we see that she has two relationships in our database. One where she's connected to galactic gadgets and one where she's connected to eco warriors. If we can go into the company side, we're going to see this as well. We can see, ah, check that out. Galactic gadgets. We've got a few people here connected to galactic gadgets, but we've got Luna here also connected to eco warriors. So this third table, the junction table is what gives us that much more granular vision of how all this data is interconnected. So understanding junction tables is critical. And something I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which was, you know, I built this using AI. If you're using AI, chances are good that while it's going to get you up and running quickly, it doesn't always put all the thought into things that you might have done if you built it by hand. So understanding these junction tables as an Airtable builder is going to help you take your building to the next level. Anytime you're stuck building linked relationships, remember this is a good chance you need a junction table. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. And of course, if you have questions that we didn't answer here, swing by our website. We've got people standing by to help you build the solution of your dreams. Of course, if you got value from this, I'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up and of course, subscribe to the channel as well. But most importantly, keep on building.